everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. Today's video is something that I've been wanting to film for ages, and the reason that I haven't posted it up until now is because I really wanted to take my time with it and I wanted to get this video series right. I wanted this to be a three-part series, I wanted it to be really, really informative, like something that Shane Dawson would make, you know, like really well investigated, lots of interviews, things like that. But I made this video today because I just saw a tweet and it kind of pushed me over the edge and I wanted to wait and make this series later, but when I saw this tweet, I was like, no. I can't wait. I have to make this now. I have to. Because James Charles tweeted something today that made me so angry and I just, I have to talk about it. I have to address this because he is such an influential person and so many people will read his tweet and believe that, that, I mean, it just, it needs to get out there. I don't have that big an influence, but I mean, there are 180,000 of you that I could at least inform. So anyway. What I'm going to do is read you the origin of where this tweet stemmed from. So basically, someone posted something on Instagram, someone then took a screenshot of it and put it on Twitter, and then James Charles responded to that tweet. Someone called KJ Bennett Beauty wrote this on Instagram. Now this all stemmed from Marlene, who is the owner of Makeup Geek, posting a video the other day about her truth about the beauty community, where she basically talked about influencers that she's worked with, charging astronomical prices and preferring money over honesty. So that's not what today's video is about. You can research that yourself. I'll put some links down below in case you're interested. But someone saw that video and wrote this Instagram caption. They said, I'd like to thank Marlene for having the courage to publish a YouTube video exposing what's going on behind the scenes in the cosmetic industry. I've attempted to shed light on the mobster-like behaviour of top-level beauty influencers and their management, and I've been accused of jealousy, called a liar and a hater. Fact! A brand I consulted with asked me to inquire about working with a top-level beauty influencer. The influencer's management offered me these options. $25,000 for a product mention in a multi-branded product review, $50 to $60,000 dedicated product review, price determined by the length of the video, $75,000 to $85,000 dedicated negative review of a competitor's product, price determined by the length of the video, a minimum 10% affiliate link or code to use on Instagram and YouTube. Yes, option three is legit, payment to damage the competition's business. I told you it was a mob-like behaviour. The demands and threats of influencers and their management have got to stop. The lack of disclosure by top-level influencers is fraud and it's time for the Federal Trade Commission to step in, start changing fines and shut this bullshit down. To the followers and subscribers who still refuse to believe their idols are thugs, pull your head out of your favourite beauty guru's ass and see what's actually going on in this industry. So that, let me just start, that's all true, that's all 100% true, that is not a lie, that's not made up. That's 100% true, and I know that's true because I have seen exactly all of this from two standpoints. I've seen it from an influencer point of view, as an influencer myself, but I also work in marketing in my full-time job, and I have actually been on the end of the marketing companies that work with the influencers that charge this sort of money, and I have seen exactly what he said, where companies are willing to pay people to put down other products to make theirs look better. That is 100% true. And I feel really sad for this person because this person has gone out on a limb and written this on Instagram and said that they've been accused of jealousy, being called a liar and a hater because they're trying to get this out there. And the reason that I'm making this video today is because I am standing by KJ Bennett Beauty. I don't even know who that is, never heard of them. But I read this and I was like, yeah, that, that's all true. That's 100% true. So someone on Twitter called Hey April took a screenshot of that Instagram post and tweeted, your favorite beauty influencer gets paid $75,000 for a negative review of a competitor brand. James Charles came along. Now, bless his dear soul. I love James Charles. He is one of the only beauty gurus that I actively watch every single video that he posts. I keep up with him on all of his social media. Anytime I buy from Morphe, I use his code. Like, I really support that kid. I think he's a great kid. And he tweeted this. He tweeted, 
I've never heard of this happening and believe what you want, but most of us do disclose sponsorships. I can't wait to talk about people like the man who posted this in a video very soon and then side eyes. Now, the reason that I got so upset by James's tweet is because he said, I can't wait to talk about people like the man who posted this. Referencing the person that made that Instagram post calling out influencers for their rates. James says he's going to make a video to talk about people like the man that posted this. Well, you know what, James? I'm one of those people too. I might not have posted it, but I'm like that man. I have worked in marketing and I have seen exactly what that man is saying and it is true. Now, I am not calling James a liar. Like James said, I've never heard of this happening. I, I 100%, I'm sure he's, he's been true. He's been very honest. Like he's never heard of this happening. He's only, what is he like 18 or something? I don't even know. Like, of course he's never heard of this happening. He's a young, he's a young kid. Like what, is he just fresh out of school? Like. I'm 24 years old, I have a media degree, straight out of university, I got a job at one of the biggest media corporations on the planet, and most of you guys would be using some form of asset belonging to this company on your computer, on your phone, on your television. Like, I've worked in the industry, and James hasn't. Like, James is saying, I've never heard of this happening. Of course you haven't, you're a good kid. He's a very honest, good kid. But for him to say that he's gonna, he's gonna make a video about the man that posted this and all this sort of thing. It's like he's calling that man a liar or he's gonna come out and say that man's jealous or he's a hater or whatever. James, you're not gonna see this, I know he's not gonna see this, but don't do that. Like, this guy has nothing to gain from saying that. I have nothing to gain from saying this. I'm trying to raise awareness in today's video to explain to people, like, the secret world of influencers. What happens behind the scenes with influencers that you guys never see? Now. James said in his tweet, most of us do disclose sponsorships. Now, this is what I want to talk about in today's video. I'm going to make this uh, a couple of videos. I have a lot to talk about, but in today's video, specifically because James said, most of us do disclose sponsorships. That's true. Most of us do. There's a lot of really good influence out there. They're good eggs. They are trying to be open. They're trying to be honest. They're trying to have full disclosure. There's a lot of them. But you guys would be so surprised by the amount of your favorite influencers that never, ever, ever disclose that their content is sponsored. What I want you guys to know about is the way influencers can make money. Now, if you're a really big influencer, let's say James Charles, for example, he has a management team. And if a brand wanted to work with James, they would probably contact his management. I'm not certain, but they would probably contact his management. The management would look at all the incoming requests and they'd go to James and they'd say, look, these companies want to work with you. What's our schedule like? All this sort of thing. The management handles it. But for some of the smaller influencers, there's platforms that you can use that are self-managed where you can log on to the platform and companies have uploaded campaigns that they want influencers to make for them. So I've talked about this in my Amazon handbag video. Where I talked about the fact that I was on one of these websites looking at all the different brand deals that were going and I saw a really, really cute handbag and I was like, oh, that's adorable. And I did the campaign for them and I showed people the brief. I showed them what the brand wanted me to talk about. I was really, really open about it. Like the brand wanted me to talk about this bag, all this sort of thing. So there's websites like that that we can log on to and there's hundreds, if not thousands of brands that are posting things there saying, we want an influencer to talk about our new skinny weight loss tea, or we want an influencer to talk about our makeup mirror. We want an influencer to talk about our nail polish, like whatever. So the reason that I got so kind of like upset is because something has been dwelling in the back of my mind that I really wanted to talk about recently with a particular product that's been floating around that a lot of the top beauty gurus have been talking about. Now, I don't want a legal case on my hands, so unfortunately I cannot tell you guys what the product is, but I will give you a little bit of an idea. So, on one of these websites, a lot of YouTubers won't talk about the websites. Like, they, they have websites that they use to get sponsored, but the whole uh, influencer landscape is very, very competitive, and people don't like to tell other people where they can go to get paid. Uh, they just don't. Like, <laughs> they, they keep it very, very close. Like, they found an app that they make money off. They don't want to tell people what that app is. So, there's a couple of apps. There's one called Famebit, which is, I think it's owned by YouTube now. There's one called Tribe, which is owned by an Australian guy called Jules Lund. Uh, there's, there's heaps of them. Octoly, like, there's so many. But on one of these particular apps, quite recently, a campaign went up. And it said, something 
something along the lines of we're looking for influencers to test out our product. Now, I'm just gonna pick a product out of thin air because I don't actually wanna say what the actual product is because I don't wanna get sued. Let's say it was a foundation brush. So a brand posted a campaign on this influencer platform and said, we're looking for influencers to talk about our foundation brush. Our budget is $30,000. Now, I don't know whether that brand meant $30,000 per influencer or if they had like a total campaign value of $30,000 that they were going to divide up between influencers, I'm not sure. But they said their budget was $30,000. So they said, we want people to talk about our makeup, our foundation brush, and we want people to compare it to this foundation brush, which was from another company. Now, the two products were exactly the same. I guess you could say one was almost like a dupe of the other one, except it was slightly different and way cheaper. So this one product, let's say the foundation brush, that's the hypothetical product, let's say it was $2. They wanted influencers to compare it to the expensive foundation brush, which was, let's say, $30. And they said, in their brief, they specifically said, we are willing to pay more if you are willing to say that our product is better than the other one or that you recommend our product over the other one. We're willing to pay more. So, I mean, it, it's everywhere, like everywhere. I see these campaigns all the time for eyeshadow palettes. I see them for clothes. I see them for, for a good one. A good example that I saw recently was a, a company just started up and they were trying to be like Fashion Nova and they wanted people to make videos about their clothes and they wanted the title of the video to say Fashion Nova haul, but then they wanted the video to be their products and they wanted people to say, don't buy from Fashion Nova, buy from us, buy from this company instead. And they said, anyone that puts Fashion Nova haul in the title will make more money. And if you say to people, don't buy from Fashion Nova, but buy from us instead, we'll pay you more. So this, it happens all the time. I see it every time I log on to these platforms. Now, a lot of the time the platforms are strict and they don't allow that sort of activity and they take the campaign down. They do. Like I've seen campaigns appear with those sort of things written, like we'll pay you more if you trash talk the other brand and the campaign disappears very quickly. But think about it this way, those sort of things happen outside of those platforms every day. Brands just reach out directly to the influencer and they say, hey, what are your rates for this thing? Like they'll, they'll get an email, the influencer will get an email from a brand I had an, <laughs> literally this morning, I got an email from a company wanting me to advertise something and they said to me, what are your rates for if you just show it in one of your PO box videos? Now never have I been paid to show anything in one of my PO box videos ever and I will not accept that as a sponsorship. I'll show free things, like people send me something for free, I'll show that. But if I'm getting paid, like if I was going to do that, if I was really desperate for cash and I was like, oh yeah, sure, send something to my PO box and you can pay me to unbox it. If I did that, I wouldn't let that sway my opinion. I'm not going to do that. But anyway, a company emailed me and they said, how much would you charge us to show a product in your PO box haul versus how much would you charge us to show it on its own versus how much would you charge us to show the product, say that you paid for it with your own money and that it is not sponsored. Let that sink in. The, the company literally said to me, can you give us a rate for how much you're willing to charge to sell your soul? Like, this happens every day. So, James has come out and said, you know, most of us do disclose our sponsorships. Now, the reason that I got really, really upset is because like I was saying, I used that analogy of the uh, foundation brush, right? And they were saying, we want you to talk about our foundation brush and verse it to a different foundation brush and say that ours is better. Right, so this is where it gets kind of weird. I was browsing through, I browse these websites all the time in the hopes that I will find something that I actually like. Now, I've only done a couple of sponsorships on my YouTube channel, like actual sponsorships. I've had a lot of stuff for free, but I've only done a couple of paid things. And one of them was Dolls Kill, and I found Dolls Kill because of one of these websites. And I love Dolls Kill, absolutely love it. So when I was scrolling through the website and Dolls Kill had a campaign and they were like, we're looking to send clothes to YouTubers to make videos about our clothes, I was like over the moon. So what you do, you apply for the campaign and you say, you give them like a little idea of what you would do. So I sent them a message, I was like, hey, oh my God, oh my God, I love Dolls Kill so much. Like, I would just like to make a haul video. Maybe I could show like 10 items like I'll probably pick pastel things, you know, and they came back and they were like, yeah, sick, sure. So they, we did that collab. So I saw 
last week or the week before, or whenever it was, I, s I was browsing through one of these websites, seeing if there were any campaigns that interested me, and I saw a product. And I thought, oh yeah, that's interesting. And I clicked on it, it said, we're a startup company. And they had their budget, their budget was huge. Anyway, they were like, we're a startup company, we're looking to send this product to influencers to use our product and do a challenge using our product and using our competitor's product. And, you know, for people to say that our product's better for a fraction of the price. Anyway, I didn't know what the product was, it didn't interest me. Like, I clicked on the campaign, I was like, what's this? Read it, I was like, never heard of them, closed it. That week on YouTube, I saw six of six huge, huge beauty influencers talking about this product out of nowhere. All of them at the same time. Not a single one said that it was sponsored. So there is a chance, there's a chance that that company just got all the PR boxes of all the big beauty gurus and sent it out. Like that's, I'm not, I'm not saying that they paid those people. But I just thought it was really funny that I went on this platform and I saw this campaign for this product that was just launching, never heard of it before. They had this huge budget. They were literally saying, this is our budget. It was massive. And they were like, we're looking for people to talk about our thing and, and use it in a challenge style video. And then all of a sudden, these videos popped up on YouTube all within the same week of all these people using exactly the same product, using it in comparison with a similar product. And me, I was like, oh my God, that's that, that's that thing. Like that's, the, and I went back on the platform just to double check. And sure enough, there was, there was the thing. There was the ad, like the campaign saying, we're looking for influencers, blah, blah, blah. It was the same product. So me looking at it, I'm thinking to myself, it is more than likely that those other influencers have seen that and they've, they've gone for the campaign and they've put their price on it. Cause what you do, you price your own material. Like you decide based on your viewers and all this sort of thing, how much you're going to charge. And then the brand looks at how much you're charging and they can come back and say, sorry, we can't afford it. Can you cut the price? Things like that. So I reckon that those influencers jumped on that campaign, but they didn't disclose it. Like, don't you guys think it's weird that all in the same week when the sponsorship opportunity appeared on this website, all of a sudden, all of the, all these six people started talking about that thing in the exact same style of video that the campaign asked for. Like, I know what's going on here. Like your, your regular, your viewers, your millions of viewers have no idea because your millions of viewers aren't on that influencer platform, but I am, I've seen that campaign. Now there, there is always the chance that maybe, maybe the company just sent it out for free to all of those people and all of those people unboxed it in their regular kind of PO box. They're just pulling open their parcels. They're like, oh, that's an interesting thing. I've never heard of that. Maybe I'll make a video. It was obviously the obvious choice to compare it to a similar product. That's obvious. They probably saw it. They're like, oh, this thing already exists, but it's really cheap. I'll compare it. Maybe six of them all at the same time had the independent thought that they were all going to do that. And they all released the video in the same week. But there's no way of proving that. And the difficulty here comes into the fact that you're crossing a lot of international laws here. So if you are being paid by a company in another country to post something that you're being paid to post, the laws, it's a little bit messy. As opposed to if an Australian company contacted an Australian and said, we want to pay you to post about this, and the Australian posted about it and didn't disclose it, it's really easy to nab them. Like, we, we have, you know, a board here that c people can report people to and they investigate. It's all within Australia. That's easy. But what happens when the company is based in another country and they're paying someone in, in your country? So let's say the Australian advertising guidelines for sponsorships and all that sort of thing would be different to what they are in America and they would be different to the UK and all this sort of thing and Holland, the Netherlands, like anywhere, it's different everywhere that you go. So I know some influencers, <laughs> I have been to a couple of influencer events where people talk about ways that they can get around things like this. They literally sit around in little groups and they're like, oh, well, I wait until I go on holidays to so-and-so country because they don't have strict laws there. And I upload the video when I'm in that country. So then that way it doesn't fall under the advertising guidelines that my country has. I'm not kidding you. Like people are crazy because companies will pay way, way, way more for it to seem like an honest opinion. Like, I... so, now I'm going to talk about, a, just touch on this topic lightly. I'm going to make a video, a full in-depth video about this, but I'm going to talk about Tribe. Now, 
This is going to sound like one gigantic sponsorship, but I can promise you it's not. I kind of hate this company as an influencer, as a brand. I have worked with this company from a brand point of view. So Tribe, it's owned by Jules Lund. It's an app and you basically open it. There's literally just campaigns, just as far as the eye can see, campaigns. So what I like to do, I just scroll through to see if there's any companies that I recognize that I already buy from. And if there are, then I will create content for them. So a really, really brief rundown of how it works. The brand, let's say McDonald's, they're launching a new burger. So they might contact their advertising agency and come up with some sort of creative campaign. Like how can we get viewers engaged and excited about our burger? So then the advertising agency will come up with some sort of cool, fun thing. The advertising agency will then go on Tribe. Now some smaller companies just skip the advertising agency, they just do this themselves. But they'll come up, regardless of whether they have an agency or it's just them coming up with it, they can go on Tribe and they can say, here's the name of the campaign, the McDonald's Spicy Burger. Then it can say, Australian influencers, whatever, we want you to visit a McDonald's and buy one of these spicy burgers and take a picture of it and then write a caption saying that it's the best burger you've had in your entire life and you recommend that other people go buy it. And then it'll say, you have to include hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored and hashtag McDonald's in your caption. So then as the influencer, you could be scrolling through Tribe and you can be like, oh look, Maccas, Maccas has an ad, like I love Maccas. So then you read it and you're like, okay, they want people to eat the spicy burger and take a picture. So you jump in your car, you drive to McDonald's, you order the spicy burger, you pay for it, you take a picture of it, you upload it onto Tribe and you write a caption and you think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna say, uh, hey guys, had a really fun Wednesday today, went to McDonald's and ate this new burger. Wow, it was so good. It's a bit spicy, but I love spice. Hashtag ad. So then you upload the picture and the caption to Tribe. So then the advertising agency or the individual brand logs onto Tribe and they can see a hundred different influencers have submitted, a have submitted pictures. So they look through them and they go, Okay, well, this person only has 5,000 followers. No, we don't. We only want to work with big influencers. So they might go through and look at the all the pages, and it'll tell you this person has 50,000 followers. This one has 500,000 followers, and it breaks down their account and their analytics and all that sort of thing. And then the brand can say approve, and if they say approve, then the influencer gets a notification on their app, and it says congratulations, McDonald's has approved your post please post it within the next 48 hours. And then the second that you post it, Tribe sends money to your bank account. So that's how it works. So it's great because it's really, really, really monitored. The people on Tribe are so strict. So for example, the, the influencers on Tribe, if you even think about buying followers, they will boot you. Like they'll just instantly ban you because if you've got 4,000 followers and then one day you're like, Mm, I, I really want more followers and then you buy a thousand followers. Tribe goes, eh, no one gains a thousand followers in a day, sorry, and then they boot you off the platform and you can't access it anymore and they ban you. Now, this happened to me when my very, very first Wish video went viral. The first Wish, uh, no, yeah, my first Wish video, it went from having, I had like 5,000 subscribers when I posted that video and within a couple of weeks, I ended up with, I think like 30,000 subscribers and my Instagram blew up and Tribe kicked me off because they thought it was suspicious. So I had to send them an email and I had to send them screenshots of my YouTube analytics and all this sort of thing and then they looked at it and they were like, oh right, that makes sense. So they reinstated my account, but they're really good for protecting brands because they make sure that brands only have real genuine influencers with real followers because they audit your followers as well. So literally every, I think it's like every three hours, they have some sort of bot that runs through people's followers and checks to make sure that they're fake accounts or anything like that. They're really, really strict. So Tribe is one of those platforms where it's trustworthy if you're a brand and you're trying to find influencers to work with. So in my actual job, I've, I've used Tribe with companies to work on ad campaigns and I've seen the sort of astronomical prices that some influencers charge. We're talking like $50,000 for an Instagram post. Like, so the way that you, the pricing system works, I'll just put this up here. So this is Tribe's price guide. So they basically say, if you're an influencer with this many followers, that's what you can charge. That's a recommendation. Not everyone follows that. <laughs> so anyway, that's just an idea for influencers, that's just to show you guys kind of like how influencers can make money. 
But the issue kind of comes into the fact where an influencer could just be browsing through Tribe and they're like, man, I'm broke. I want, I want to go on a holiday. I want to earn $5,000. And they could just apply to every single campaign. They could maybe, let's say I use that example of McDonald's. Maybe they're a vegan. I mean, I don't, I don't think a vegan would do this, but let's say they're a vegan, hypothetically. They don't eat meat, and but they're desperate for money. And they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to submit to that McDonald's campaign. And then they go to Macca's and they buy their burger. And they tell their followers, wow, this burger is delicious. They ordered the burger, they took a photo, they threw the burger in the bin, they didn't even eat it. So that's where it's kind of, it's muddy because anyone can submit content for any campaign. But if your audience knows you well enough, they can see through it from a mile away. So for me on my Instagram account, Pretty Pastel Please, I've done, I think two or maybe three sponsored posts at most. And the sponsored posts that I did were for brands that I was already using. So Swarovski, for example, I've been wearing Swarovski jewelry for like 10 years, I reckon. And Swarovski had a campaign on Tribe and they were like, we want people to talk about the fact that if you buy three pieces of jewelry, you get one free or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, I love Swarovski. So I applied for the campaign. I was like, I would love to be part of this. They sent me the jewelry. Like, that's great because for me, it's a brand that I really like. But let's say there's a brand up there now. I've seen this a lot and it makes my blood boil and I've reported a few brands because it made me so angry. There was one and I've ranted about this before. It was a skinny tea company and they said, we want influencers to post pictures, influencers with good bodies to post pictures of themselves holding our skinny tea and saying that they're skinny because of our tea. Like these are people that have never once drunk that tea in their life. They have a good body. Now let's say you're someone with an Instagram account with 100,000 followers and you see that campaign, you're like, hmm, huh, I have a good body. This is a good opportunity for me to make $1,000. So you contact them, you apply for the campaign, you say, yeah, I'd like to talk about your skinny tea. They send you the tea, you go, ah, you know, really happy with my ads right now. Thank you so much, skinnytea.com or whatever you're going to say. And then try the people, the company is like, yes, approve, ka-ching, you get $1,000. Your subscribers go, oh my God, she has such a nice body. Oh wow, she drinks that skinny tea. Oh, okay, I'll buy the skinny tea. That person never drank the skinny tea. Like, this is what, if you're going to support someone, I don't, I think there's nothing wrong with sponsorships. I think sponsorships are fantastic because it means that people like me, you know, if you're a content creator, you can get paid, you can continue to do what you love. But also at the same time, there's people out there that are absolutely going to abuse that. So I think for you guys, my kind of moral of today's story is to just stay woke. I hate that term. Stay woke. If you support, you know, if you really support someone and you value their opinions, try to invest in that person a little bit more. Try to get to know them. Try to look across their account, see what sort of things that they talk about. Let's say it's a skinny tea thing, for example, and you know this influencer really well, and they've been talking about the fact that they've been on a no carb diet for six months. Let's say they've talked about it on their Instagram and all that sort of thing. And suddenly a skinny tea ad appears on their account and they're saying, I'm skinny because of this tea. You as a viewer who has been following this person for a while, you would automatically recognize that that is not true. Or let's say someone is talking about an eyebrow product and in all of their videos, they say, I don't know how to use an eyebrow pencil. I only know how to use eyebrow gel. And then one day they're holding an eyebrow pencil in a sponsored post. This is my favorite eyebrow pencil, but you've been watching them for a couple of months and you know they don't like eyebrow pencils. You know they only like gel. That's warning signs. So just try to stay aware of the fact that not everyone is honest. Try and flesh out who the honest people are. It's really obvious to tell who the honest people are. I won't buy a product unless Tati gives it the, thumb, the thumbs up because I love Tati. I know money cannot buy Tati Westbrook. It can't. People like Jeffree Star, he doesn't do sponsorships. He doesn't do affiliate codes. That man has all the money in the world. Like if he talks about a product being good, I believe him. If Jeffree says that thing is good, I'm like, okay, Jeffree, that thing is good. James Charles, he's a good kid. I trust what he says too. So you really kind of have to flesh it out Decide, who am I going to believe? Who am I going to trust? If you see someone posting something that doesn't seem quite right and it's an ad, take it with a grain of salt. Like just, Archie, just do yourself a favor and try to educate yourself. I mean, remember that, that Bennett, KJ Bennett or whoever it was that made that Instagram post that said, 
People get paid $25,000 for a product mention in a multi-branded product review. That's true. That's true. I've seen that from both an influencer point of view, not myself, but I have a lot of friends that are influencers that make that sort of money. All they have to do is they pull out their products. They say, these are my favorites for summer. One of those products that might even be there for $25,000. The second thing they said was fifty dollars to $60,000 for a dedicated product review. That's, that's cheap for some influencers. I mean, like, I've seen influencers with two, 200,000 Instagram followers that make fifty dollars to $60,000 for one Instagram photo. I've seen that. I've seen that because I have worked in marketing and I have literally seen companies pay that. I'm not joking. Uh, the thing about seventy-five dollars to $85,000 for a dedicated negative review of a competitor's product, I have seen that too. I can't name names because I really don't want to get sued. But exactly what I said about that, like I said, foundation brush was my example where they said we want you to use our foundation brush and the other foundation brush, ours is cheaper. We want you to tell people don't buy the other one, buy this one, it's much better. Those sort of reviews get so much more money than just a regular review. So anyway, that's that. Got that off my chest. I just, I saw James Charles's tweet and I was like, James, please, like, you're a young guy, and just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not happening. Anyway, so something that I really want to do is I want to keep making videos about this. I want to show you guys a little bit more in depth about those websites, for example, and what sort of campaigns are available on them, what sort of money that people make from those sort of uh, posts on Instagram. So I have a lot of friends that make really good money on Instagram just by doing lots of sponsorships. Uh, I have a lot of friends that hate sponsorships. I have worked with a lot of brands on campaigns like that and I have brands that I could interview that could spill some serious tea on influencers. They probably couldn't say anyone's names because they'd get in trouble, but they could definitely explain a bit more about the sort of rates that they have been quoted from influencers. The, the thing at the end of the day, imagine how difficult it must be to police this. Like, think about it this way. Think of how many videos go up on YouTube and how many pictures go up on Instagram every single day. How does someone police that? How can any board or commission or anything police whether or not an influencer is being paid to talk about something? Sometimes I have seen where brands will pay the influencer for the very first sponsorship. So let's say the very first time that the product appears on their channel, they will pay them a huge amount of money, but behind the scenes, the brand has said to the influencer, okay, now if you feature it in this video, then you have to use that and only that product exclusively, let's say eyebrows, let's say it's a company with an eyebrow pencil and they're saying, okay, uh, we'll pay you $50,000 for the eyebrow pencil video, but that $50,000, actually the terms and conditions behind the scenes is that you have to use that eyebrow pencil for five months, for example, five months. But to sort of get around the fact that they don't want people to know that that influencer is only using that eyebrow product for those five months because they're being paid, they will say the $50,000 is specifically reserved for that one video. It's like, oh yeah, this $50,000, that's for one video. Oh, and uh, I just like the product so much that I'm gonna keep using it for five months. How do you police that? Like, you don't police that. <laughs> As a viewer, you just have to kind of be aware of the fact that these things could be happening. As an influencer, you have to be honest because honesty is all you have in this industry. If you lose your integrity and you lose your honesty, your word means nothing. So you really have to hope that people are being honest and they are being open. Like, I love to tell you guys about my sponsorships and the free stuff that I get. I love to be like, oh, hey, like I got this for free because I emailed the brand and I said to them, I like your product, I would love to review it. Would you mind like sending it to me? And a lot of people think that I beg brands but at the end of the day, would you guys rather that I accept, now I have 50,000 followers on Instagram, I have 180,000 subscribers on YouTube. I get brands coming to me saying they will give me $5,000 to talk about their product. Now I have never ever accepted anything like that. The only time that I've accepted paid things is because I actually really like the product. I've had a few brands contact me that I didn't know and I said to them, oh yeah, if you send me the product and if I like it, I'm happy to make the video and I've sent the products away. Like even though I literally had a brand email me, they were in New York, they emailed me, they said they were launching something new. They wanted me to do a five minute segment in one of my videos and they would pay me $5,000. Now I looked into the product, 
I was like, man, I could really use that money, but I'm not going to sell my integrity. So I said no, because I looked at the product. I was like, this, this, no, like I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe in the brand. It seemed to like, I just, they, they literally, they wanted me to talk about the product before I even received it. They were like, okay, in the first video, we want you to say that you, you ordered this. They didn't want me to say I bought it. But they said that I had to word it like, okay, in one of your videos say you're really excited because you ordered this thing and put the link in your description. And then when it arrives, we want you to talk about it then for five minutes and we'll give you $5,000. No. I mean, any company that's going to ask me to review a thing, to endorse a thing that I literally haven't even picked up in my hands or touched, no, I'm not going to do it. So just remember, there are people out there that will, that, but... I guess at the end of the day, if the product is a good product and they're endorsing something good, even if they're getting paid a lot of money to do it and maybe they're saying nice things about the product because they're getting paid, if the product is good, there's not too much harm that can come of it. I mean, like, if someone is being paid $100,000 by a car company to say they love that car and it's a beautiful car, like, okay, I mean, there's only, like, it's kind of different to pretending that something is good purely for money versus being paid and you're saying so you're only talking about the thing because you're being paid but at least the thing is good like this is where the whole influencer world gets it's very messy and there's a lot of stories that I can share with you guys a lot of people that I can interview from brands marketing people marketing insiders influencers everyone that I would love to continue this series and interview people to show you guys a real wide range of opinions on this topic so yeah guys that's it I mean I, all of this was sparked because I saw James Charles saying that he has never seen, he's never heard of a company paying someone to talk badly about another product. And James said, oh, I've never heard of that happening. James might not have heard of that happening, but it does happen. Some people care more about money than they care about integrity, which is exactly what Marlene was talking about, where she was saying influencers were quoting $60,000 for one mention of Makeup Geek. And she's saying, we simply can't afford it. The influencer should be wanting to promote something to their... To their audience that their audience is going to like even if they're not going to get paid sixty thousand dollars even if they're going to get paid five thousand dollars they should care more about their audience and the fact that what they're showing their audience it's a great product and even though the company isn't going to pay them sixty thousand dollars to talk about it they should care about their audience more than the money so that's what marlene was talking about and that's what i believe in so for people to charge huge astronomical amounts of money for sponsored posts purely because they're like I'm only going to talk about your thing if you're going to pay me huge amounts of money they don't care about the product they just care about the money and the problem is there's so many people out there making such good money right now from the beauty community and from other industries on YouTube they're making such a killing they are making bank and they don't want anyone to know about what I'm saying or what that guy on Instagram was saying they don't want people to know that because the more woke you guys are to the tricks and shenanigans, the less you guys are going to buy and the less money they're going to make. So we need more people to be open about this and share their experiences online. If you're a micro-influencer, you know who you are. One of my followers on Instagram who I follow back. You have 13,000 followers. You put on your Instagram story recently that a brand was being really, really sketchy and we were messaging on Instagram about it. I'm not going to name you, but people like you. You're a micro-influencer you need to get the word out there too. Like, because the big influencers that are doing sketchy things are gonna do everything they can to squash people and to make it seem like they're lying. But I feel like, at least for me, I have an advantage over some other influencers because I see it from two perspectives. I see it from an influencer point of view. I'm friends with influencers. I am an influencer. I work with brands. I hear all of this stuff, but I see it from a marketing point of view. Like, having a media degree, having the industry experience that I have, having worked on huge campaigns dishing out. I worked on a campaign that paid an influencer $200,000 for a three minute segment and the influencer had never even heard of the brand before. Like, I have seen it from two points of view. So I like to think that you guys can trust me as a, not an authority, but at least as someone that is educated on this. So if you liked this video, you found it interesting and you would like to hear more about the it's kind of like the secret world of influencers. I can do a couple of different videos. I can show you guys all different elements of this. There's a whole bunch of stuff I didn't even touch on today. All of this stuff that I touched on just stemmed from James Charles' tweet. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you're interested in seeing more. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, that's
that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry this was a bit of a lecture. I'm sorry that I'm not my usual joyful self, but I saw that thing on Twitter and I just got so upset and I just had to make this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys next time. Mwah! Hey everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favorite bird, Archie. <laughs>
before they're released to the public. Let's say there's a selected group of influencers for a brand that's launching a product. Maybe there might only be 10 of them. If you are one of those selected people, you're going to receive the product first for free. Now, a lot of these people that you're watching, these are people that if they wanted to buy it, if this was about getting stuff for free, they would just buy it 100%. But that's not what it's about. It's about being the first person to receive the product. Because if you're on the PR list and you get that thing first, three weeks before it launches, and you're the first person to talk about it, or you're one of only 10 people to receive the product first, you're the one that's going to get the views. Let's take this into consideration. A beauty guru has been getting PR from a company for a year. They receive a product, they don't like the way it applies, all of a sudden, their PR gets cut off. That person, next time there's a product launch for that company, they don't get it. They don't get it first. They have to wait in line with everyone else and on the day that the product launches, they have to buy it with their own money. Now they don't care about that. They're loaded. They make a killing on ad revenue. They make a killing in sponsorships. The money isn't an element in this. They buy it, but the thing is the wait time. They wait a week maybe, or two weeks, depending on what country they're in. Maybe the product launched in America and they're in Australia and it takes two weeks for the product to be shipped to them. By the time the product arrives for that person to then make a video and talk about, that product has already been talked about by all of the big beauty influencers across YouTube or whatever vertical you're in, whatever industry you're representing, the people that are relevant have already spoken about it. Everyone has seen those videos before the product even launched. The hype was built up, you receive the product two weeks later along with everybody else, then you go to make a video about it and no one watches it because it pops up in their recommended and they go, oh, well, I mean, I, I already bought that thing or I've already seen everyone's review on that and they don't watch it. Now, what does that mean for the YouTuber? Someone that gets a million views, for example, you can kind of get a rough estimation of how much money they might make for ad revenue. And you can also kind of get an idea of how much they might make for a sponsorship. This information is actually really, really, really easily available, but people just don't know what to search for. So that's what I'm gonna tell you about. So we're gonna look at something called CPM. CPM means cost per thousand views. The M represents the Roman numeral for 1000, so CPM. A very, very good example to put this into perspective for you guys, because a lot of people were having an absolute fit saying, how can one person make that much money from a sponsorship? Or if it's a, just a regular video where they're making ad revenue, for example. How can someone make that much money? I had one comment here that says, all I'm saying is, there is not one person on this entire planet who should be getting paid anything more than $10,000 to review an eyeshadow palette or a lipstick or clothes. No, no, no. It's not that deep. It does not take talent or skill to test an eyeshadow palette for 10 minutes and decide if you like it or not. These are simple tasks that us as normal people do every day. If anyone seriously values these beauty influencers opinions that much and believes that beauty gurus deserve that much money to review stuff, I'm sorry, but you're probably 14 or you're just uneducated. Well, I'm sorry, but you're uneducated. Now, I'm not saying that that requires talent. It doesn't. I mean, look, look, look at what I do. I unbox clothes and I try them on and I say whether I like the fabric or whether it fits well. It takes no talent whatsoever. But none of this is about talent. That is not what marketing or advertising is about. Advertising is about viewers. Advertising is about you guys. It's about the people that are going to see the product. It's about exposure. So to give you a good example, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl gets 114 million views right? 114 million viewers worldwide tune into the Super Bowl. It costs 5 million US dollars for a 30 second ad segment in the Super Bowl. Just think about that, right? Now remember what I said about CPM, cost per thousand views. All you guys have to do is go on Google and type in CPM calculator. I'm going to bring one up right now. There's a couple of ways that you can determine how much someone might be getting paid, or if you're someone putting a price on your material, you can determine how much you deserve to be paid by looking at the CPM. So there's three factors that come into play. You can see them on the screen here. All you have to do is populate two of those factors. So using the Super Bowl as an example, what we're going to do is say number of impressions. Now, like I said, 114 million people watch the Super Bowl. Right? So that's the number of impressions. For the 114 million people watching, an impression is just someone is seeing it, right? The total cost for the campaign, I'm going to write $5 million. Because as we know, like I said, for an ad on the Super Bowl, it's $5 million. 
All I have to do is click calculate now and it comes up with the CPM. So the cost per thousand views is $43.85 to decide how much someone will get paid for a sponsorship or whatever it may be. It could be a sponsorship or it could just, it could be a product placement or whatever. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take someone that gets a million views on every video, for example. So all we have to do here, the only factors that we have to change, the number of impressions, we're gonna change that to one million because this YouTuber gets a million views on every single one of their videos. That's a million impressions. We're going to leave the CPM as 43.85 because we were just able to work out that CPM based on the Super Bowl. This is a hypothetical CPM. The CPM can vary depending on where it's being aired, what the, what the station is, what the channel is, what the industry is. Some industries set a higher CPM because they're more competitive, but we're just gonna leave it at $43. We're working on the Super Bowl kind of CPM. So for a million impressions with a cost per thousand views of $43, we're just gonna click calculate $43,850. Does that make sense to you guys? If it doesn't, leave a question down below for me, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's take someone that gets, on average, every single one of their videos gets at least three million views. We know there's people out there that get that many views. There's a lot of them. Doesn't matter whether they're daily vloggers, they're fashion people, they're beauty people, they're DIY channels. We know every time that they post a video, they get about three million views. So for them to then determine how much they're going to charge for an ad placement or a sponsorship in their video, all they have to do is go into a calculator like this and say, number of impressions. Well, I know every single time that I post a video, I get 3 million views. They know that, it's a track record. So they'll put 3 million. Let's leave the CPM as 43. We're just using that as a CPM, just as like an industry, just a benchmark kind of CPM. Let's calculate. 131,550. So to put this into perspective, Let's say, for example, what's a brand that... Okay, when we all saw Shane's Jeffree Star series, I'm, I'm assuming we all saw it. When you think about Shane, now I am not saying Shane makes this sort of money. I'm not saying that. I'm just going to use Shane as an example because most of us know who he is and most of us... I mean, that Jeffree Star series has over 20 million views, right? Remember before Shane posted, he was tweeting about how we're waiting to find a sponsor. We're waiting to find a sponsor. Now Shane got some fantastic sponsors on that series. He had betterhelp.com. Philip DeFranco is also sponsored by them. Like this is a brand that has a fantastic message. It's counseling, it, you know, it's a service that's really, really easily accessible. Let's say betterhelp.com and Shane are trying to work out how much that betterhelp.com should be paying Shane to show that. Shane had no way of knowing that those videos were going to get 20 million views. He didn't know that. I mean, up until that point, his videos were getting, what, maybe like five, eight million views kind of thing. He didn't know it was going to blow up so huge. So let's just say Shane said to betterhelp.com, uh, we're probably going to get about eight million views. So what betterhelp.com or what Shane could have done in that situation is gone number of impressions, eight million. Let's say the CPM, let's set a lower cost per thousand views. Now, the reason that I'm setting a lower cost for Shane Nothing against Shane, but when you work in marketing, you'll come to understand that different industries set different prices for their ads. For example, let's say someone makes a video about a makeup product and there's 20 makeup companies that have ads loaded on YouTube, ready to air. Who, whose ad gets seen? It's the company that pays the highest amount of money for their CPM. One company might say, look, our CPM is $20. We're only willing to pay $20 for a thousand views. Another company might say, we're willing to pay 30. Another company with a bigger budget might say, we're willing to pay 50. So when the ad is airing, for example, all of a sudden a bid, just like on eBay, the companies, it, they don't, there's no one actually physically sitting there doing it. It's all automated on the computer. Whoever has the highest price is going to get to show their ad first. That's the ad that will air. So for someone making videos about makeup, for example, to give you my exact experience, I posted a video that got 40,000 views and it was about makeup. It was 30 minutes long and I had three ads on the video. Another video I posted was 30 minutes long with three ads, but that video has 170,000 views. Those two videos made exactly the same amount of money, almost to the cent in ad revenue. And that's because the beauty industry sets a higher CPM than what fashion does. 
So I hope this is making sense. So bringing this back to Shane as my example. Shane, he's a male, he posts fun content, but when you think about it, he doesn't belong to any particular kind of industry. Unlike a beauty blogger, for example, who all they're doing is talking about makeup, right? So the ads that are going to play on their channel are probably going to be tailored towards people that like makeup. But for someone like Shane, who doesn't have a particular thing that they're discussing all the time, the ads that play on his channel might be a little bit more, you know, open, a bit more, they're not really tailored to his content, they're just kind of anyone that wants to play an ad to be seen by anyone. And those ads tend to go for a lower CPM. So let's say in Shane's case, his CPM, we'll bring it down from 43 was the example with the Super Bowl. Let's bring Shane's CPM down to 30, hypothetically. So Shane might have said to betterhelp.com, I'm going to get 8 million views on this video. I know that because that's my guaranteed video track record. I'll get 8 million views. Setting it at a CPM of $30, we'll calculate $240,000 for a sponsorship. Now, I'm not saying Shane made $240,000. I have no way whatsoever of knowing how much Shane made. He could have made $10,000 for all we know. But this is just from a marketing standpoint. This is how we in the industry determine how much we're willing to pay for a campaign or what we're going to price a campaign at. That is where that figure comes from. And these people out there saying no influencer deserves to make $60,000. Let me tell you how many views they would need to make to justify $60,000. Let's use a $30 CPM as my example. The company has approached them and they've said, we have a $30,000 budget or something. So we'll put $30,000 as the total cost of the campaign. The CPM is $30. Calculate, they would hope that for their $30,000 investment with a cost per thousand views of $30, they would get a million views. So can you see where these figures are coming from? Now, whether it's the influencer setting their price or whether it's their management setting their price, it doesn't matter who's setting the price. The price is being determined based on their track record and how many views they're getting. That's what it's determined by. It is not necessarily determined by subscribers. Someone could have 4 million subscribers and make less money than someone with 200,000 subscribers because maybe more people are watching their videos or maybe the person with 200,000 subscribers has content that advertisers are more willing to advertise on than the person with 4 million subscribers. To put this into perspective for you from a brand point of view, and the reason why some brands are willing to pay that sort of money, I'm gonna use this fantastic example that someone left on my video yesterday. And they said, if Makeup Geek pays $60,000 for a video and they're trying to sell an eyeshadow palette for $35, it would take around 1,700 of those 1 million viewers to make $60,000 in sales not including the price of production. And with that, maybe they might have to sell 5,000 eyeshadow palettes to make a profit. But still, when someone has a million views, if 1% of their audience goes ahead and buys that palette, the company can make a profit. So that's why these huge numbers do make sense to someone that comes from a marketing point of view. For someone that is a single mom that's working three jobs, just scraping by living on $40,000 a year, it doesn't make sense. It's unfathomable to think that someone makes that much money just from one video, and maybe they're making that three times a week. It, you can't even begin to comprehend that sort of money as someone that won't see that sort of money in three years of work, for example. When you're coming from a marketing perspective and you know how much advertising costs on television, we have this thing in the industry that we call advertising blindness ad blindness. We're all so blind to ads now. Imagine, I mean, most of us don't even watch television. We just watch Netflix and YouTube in my generation. But think about people that do still sit down to watch television. There's ads playing on free to air TV. The reason that the television can come to you for free is because there's ads. That's why people pay for television without ads. So you're watching free to air TV and an ad plays. What do people do? Probably pick up their phone and they, they mute the TV and they sit there on their phone until the ad break is over, they unmute it and they put down their phone and they watch it. Companies are paying huge, huge, huge amounts of money to air that content on the television because maybe a TV show has two million people watching the show every single night. Well, hey, Shane Dawson gets more views than that on YouTube. We are not talking about the content. We're not talking about the effort that went into the content. You could be a person live streaming picking your nose, but if you have 4 million people watching you picking your nose and an ad plays, you're gonna make the money for showing an ad to 4 million people. You could be doing anything. That's where the money comes from. It's got nothing to do with talent. So people saying, 
YouTubers or beauty influencers don't deserve that money because what they're doing takes no talent. You need to change the mindset of the talent thing. It has nothing to do with talent in this industry. It has to do with the audience. Think of it this way. You might not like that someone is making $60,000 when they do a sponsored video. However, bear in mind, you're watching that video and you're watching them maybe because you enjoy their content, maybe you like them as a person. Would you rather see the money go to their pocket to help them pay their mortgage, help them raise a family? Do you want to see that money go to an individual who's going to use it for themselves? Maybe they're going to invest that money back into a business. I mean, look at Tati, for example. Tati has launched Halo Beauty. She's taken her money, she's invested it. Look at Jeffrey. He's made a makeup company. People do wise things with their money. Now, people that are disgusted that one person is making so much money, as long as products exist in this world, people are going to advertise them and people are going to make money. Do you want to see that money go directly into the pocket of a multi-billion dollar television station, multi-billion dollar company, that the money can go to them or it can go to an individual to pay off their mortgage, feed their family? It's like the supermarket thing. A lot of people in Australia right now are choosing to avoid Woolworths and Coles. There are big brand supermarkets. People are choosing to go to the individually owned privately, independently owned supermarkets because those people are selling locally grown produce and it costs a bit more. But that's the thing. People, do you want the money to go to an individual? An individual that owns their little grocery store on the side of the road and they work every single day, they work 70 hours a week to run their little grocery store and the money when you buy their groceries goes to feed their family? Or do you want that money to go to Woolworths? You just have to choose. You might not like the fact that there's influencers out there that earn that much money, but at the end of the day, as long as products exist, if those products are ever going to be sold or ever going to be seen by anyone, advertising is going to exist. Now, for a brand, it makes perfect sense to pay that sort of money, as long as the influencer has integrity. Because sometimes brands will pay astronomical amounts of money to an influencer, let's say a $50,000 campaign, they pay the influencer $50,000, no one respects that influencer's point of view, no one buys the product, the brand loses money. So that's why integrity is so important in this industry. If people don't believe what you're saying, if you say, if you fabricate lies about a product to stay on the PR list, for example, and people buy it and they're unhappy with it and they say, you know what, I'm never gonna listen to that person's opinion again. They said this thing was good, I got it, it was bad. They only said that because they wanted to stay on the PR list. This goes back to what I was saying earlier. Maybe they might gloss over the negatives and only talk about the positives because they don't want to get kicked off the PR list. Because if they get kicked off the PR list, they're not going to be the first person to upload content. They're going to be irrelevant. I mean, me for example, I'm not on a single PR list at all. I don't have really any sponsorships lined up. I have a sponsorship with Swarovski. I'm wearing a beautiful ring that Swarovski sent me. They sent me this ring to take a photo of it, to post on my Instagram account, and then they wanted me to send it back. They were going to pay me to post the picture on my Instagram account. And I said to them, would it be okay if I kept the ring? Like, I think this is an absolutely stunning, beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous ring. Would it be okay if I kept it? Like, I mean, if I'm, I'm posting about it on my account, I actually do genuinely love this ring. And if they'd said no to me, Daniel was gonna buy this for my birthday. It's my birthday in a couple of weeks. And Dan, we wrote down the name of this ring and he was gonna buy it because I love it. But they came back to me and they were like, yeah, sure, you can keep it, that's fine. Like, it'll go to a loving home, you can keep it. So the thing is, people like to say that I beg brands for products. They say, oh, that pretty pastel, please. She's so stingy. She begs brands to send her things. But at the end of the day, if you're someone like me, for example, I'll ask because as someone that's trying to dish out a lot of content, imagine if I was paying out of my pocket every single time I was making a video, I would have no money whatsoever at all. Because I mean, look at my whole video. Some of them are huge. Most of that I've paid for with my own money, but sometimes I get things for free. I've done a couple of makeup videos for a company called Yes Style, and they really respect me and they respect my opinions. And a couple of times in my videos, I've said, this thing is not worth your money, but this one is. And Yes Style didn't kick me off their list. They didn't do anything like that. I said a couple of things I didn't like, but there are also things I did like. They were like, cool, and they're still happy to keep working with me. Now, it's that coming from brands that allows influencers to remain honest. Influencers should be honest no matter what, whether or not they get kicked off the PR list or not. But the responsibility doesn't only lie with the influencer. It's not exclusively up to the influencer. It's also up to the brand to take criticism. If you don't like a brand's eyeliner and the brand never sends you another product ever again, 
then you don't get to be the first person to review that product. You miss out on your 2 million views because by the time you finally receive the product, those views have all gone to everyone else that received the product. Your video is irrelevant. You don't make the same sort of advertising revenue on that. So it's like a big cycle. If brands can accept when negative criticism comes around, it means that influencers will remain honest. And if the audience can stop having a dig at people, the amount of comments I get saying, I don't believe anything you're saying in this video because you got this stuff for free. If you can tell that the person is being honest and they have integrity and you've seen them say negative things in the past, just because they're saying something positive doesn't mean that they're lying. I mean, the makeup that I've reviewed recently, I thought it, most of it was great. So I said it was great. I wasn't gonna make up something wrong with it purely to sound as though I was being more critical. But if I did see something wrong with it, I would absolutely say so. And for people to come along and say, you're only saying something good because you got that for free, it's that sort of attitude that then leads people to hide the fact that they got something for free. So now I'm just going to quickly talk about disclosure laws in Australia. So the Australian Association of National Advertisers, basically they have recently released guidelines. So there's three things about disclosure. The first thing is if a product is being paid to be shown on someone's account, if money is exchanged, or there's terms of any sort, whether or not money was exchanged or not, if there's terms to that agreement, it has to be disclosed as an ad. Legally, it must be disclosed as an ad. However, if a brand comes to an influencer and says, we wanna pay you $1,000 to take pictures of our products, and then we're going to post those pictures on our own account, they don't have to disclose that that's an ad because the company might have an Instagram account, but it, it's an Instagram account for a company. So, the Australian Advertising Board, they basically deem that to be, well, I mean, the Instagram account for that company is just one giant marketing technique or one giant ad for that company. It doesn't need to be disclosed. Archie. Let's say Taco Bell, hypothetically. We know that Shane loves Taco Bell. So if this was in Australia, I don't know how these laws work internationally and I highly recommend that you look up disclosure laws in your own country. But in Australia, let's say Shane Dawson was in Australia and so was Taco Bell. Taco Bell could pay Shane to take a picture of himself sitting in Taco Bell eating a taco. Taco Bell could then post it on their Instagram account and say Shane Dawson enjoying a taco on Tuesday. They don't have to say ad, they don't have to say we paid Shane or anything like that because it's already deemed to be an ad because it is placed on the Taco Bell Instagram account. But if that was on Shane's Instagram account and Shane was paid to post that, he would have to say hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, this was endorsed, this was paid for, whatever. What about when something is free? Now, this is where a lot of people get very, very confused with disclosure. In Australia, at least, and like I said, look it up in your own country, but in Australia, if you receive something for free and there are no terms attached to that free item, you don't have to disclose it. You're not legally obliged to disclose it. So what I'm talking about is, if you are a YouTuber and your PO box is publicly available on your YouTube in your description, for example, and any company can go onto your channel and they can see your PO box, they can send you a product. They don't have to send a letter, they don't have to send anything. That influencer, that YouTuber, they receive the product, they open it, they're like, oh cool, and they make a video about it. They're not legally obliged to say these items were gifted to me by that product by that company. They're not legally obliged to say that because there were no terms attached. The item turned up out of the blue, no note, nothing. They don't have to say it was free. They don't have to say that they didn't pay for it. I don't know exactly how the laws work in terms of if they pretend that they paid for it. I don't know what the laws are around lying. There is no guidelines about that, but they don't have to say that they got it for free. But imagine then if that parcel turns up and they've had email correspondence with the brand. So let's say the brand reaches out to them and they say, hey there, we love your account. Can we send you our bracelet in exchange for a review? And they say yes. Then they legally have to disclose that they got that bracelet for free because there were terms attached to it. So because the company said, if we give you our bracelet, can you give us a review? That's, that's now an agreement. So they do have to disclose that. But if the bracelet just appears on their doorstep and they make a video about it, they don't have to disclose that the bracelet was for free. They could say, they don't even have to say anything. They could, they could just be like, look at this beautiful bracelet I got. I got, not I bought. Look at this bracelet I got. This is so nice. I love it. It's my favorite bracelet. 
they don't have to say that that bracelet was for free. That's why uh, sometimes people are hesitant to say they got something for free because there's people out there that will trash talk them and say, you're only saying something good because you got it for free. And it's that mentality that leads people to not talk about the fact that they got something for free because they're scared that if they say I got this thing for free, everyone's going to tell me I'm only saying nice things about it because it was free. So there's a couple of uh, frames of mind that kind of need to shift a little bit here. Brands need to stop kicking people off their PR lists because they have a voice of their own and they have an opinion. That needs to stop. People online need to stop either accepting sponsorships purely to talk about something that they don't believe in. A brand might come to them and say, can you talk about our thing? The person might be like, that's a crappy thing. But if you pay me $10,000, I'll talk about it. People need to stop doing that. They need to stop selling their integrity. And then people need to stop being so harsh on people that do receive things for free. Think about it this way, if your favourite beauty influencer gets something for free and that person, you know they've got a couple of million subscribers, they probably have a lot of money, what have they got to gain by saying good things about that free thing? Like, what have they got to gain? If they get kicked off the PR list, well, if they get kicked off the PR list, they're not going to be the first person to review it anymore. But if they have a big audience, like Tati for example, who we know has been removed from PR lists in the past, people will purposefully wait until Tati receives the product. If she doesn't get it in PR and she gets it three weeks later, people will wait until she talks about it before they buy it. So if you have that sort of platform where even if you're releasing a video late and everyone else has talked about it, but people trust your opinion over everyone else, you're in a good situation. I just hope that this kind of helps you guys to understand where those prices are coming from, helps you to understand why people will often gloss over the negative points of something and only talk about the positives because they want to be the first person to review it. And you can change that mindset by supporting people even after the thing is a trend. If someone talks about something a month after it was a hot topic, after it was a hot trend, they might talk about it a month later. If you can show support for people like that that aren't on PR lists, they might not be trendy because they didn't get the thing first. Brands need to respect the fact that they can't just kick someone off their PR list because they have an idea of their own. They, they really need to stop doing that. At the end of the day, my advice about this, what I've spoken about today, is if you see something online, whether it's a sponsorship, maybe it's a paid post, maybe it's an endorsement of some sort, or maybe it just looks like an endorsement, but it's not disclosed, just have a little bit of initiative and do a little bit of research. A, a quick Google search does not hurt at all. If your favorite influencer holds up some sugar bear vitamins, and says, my hair is really, really long because of these sugar bear vitamins. And you think, whoa, she's got long hair. She says it's because of the sugar bear vitamins. I'm going to buy the sugar bear vitamins. Just before you buy it, just go on Google and type in sugar bear vitamins. Reviews are going to come up. And if there's 10,000 reviews saying, I took these for a year and my hair didn't grow, you've just informed yourself that perhaps that person was saying that their hair is long because of the vitamins, but it's not. But let's say the person talks about the thing in a, in a sponsored post, or maybe it just looks suspiciously sponsored. Google it, maybe there's 10,000 great raving reviews. You'd be like, yeah, okay, sure. My, my favorite influencer got paid to talk about that. It's a good thing. Sure, I'm gonna buy it. Just take that little tiny, extra little tiny bit of time out of your day, do a quick Google search, just double check your information. Maybe watch a couple of other reviews, maybe watch them from big channels and watch them from small channels. That's all it takes. I'm not saying that all influencers are dishonest. So many influencers are so, so honest. And I'm not saying that all big influencers make that sort of money. Plenty of influencers are coming out on Twitter right now saying, oh, that's very rare. Not many people make that sort of money. A lot of people do make that sort of money, but they're not willing to talk about that because it's almost embarrassing just how much money people can make on a single sponsorship. It does happen and it's very, very easy to calculate. Just jump on a CPM calculator, go on Social Blade, have a look at what the ad revenue rates are roughly saying. Never take that as gospel. I mean, you might type something into a CPM calculator and it might say that the person gets paid $200,000 for that many views or something. It's not always correct. But from an industry standpoint, that is how we calculate things. And that's why brands are willing to pay huge amounts of money to influencers. So if you like this video and you found it interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. In my next video, I'm going to be spilling some serious tea. You will not look at the internet the same way again. So don't forget to keep an eye out for that video. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mwah.